Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I've got a very special video. In today's video, we are taking a look at the brand new Copus Mini. I know this has been out for maybe a couple weeks now, but you guys have been sleeping on this thing here. This is a three inch quadcopter that races and rips and flies on 4S. This thing can come with a DJI air unit or you can get it in analog and I've got it in DJI. But anyways, we're going to dive into this thing. We're going to find out what's it all about. Should you get a DJI? Should you get it analog? Should you get it at all? Let's find out. Let's go. All right, pilots. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to crack this puppy open and we are going to see what is this all about. I'm excited to even see what it looks like. I don't even know what it looks like. I'm excited. Feels like Christmas. Oh, schnizzy. Look at that. Dang, that comes in a sweet case. Huh? I can just head out to the field. Oh my, what is in store for us? What? A big old case for this little tiny drone? <laughs> what is this? All right. Oh, it's it's stuck. Okay. Do not power on without connecting antenna first. Well, you didn't connect the antenna for me? All right. So the first thing we got here is we've got our actual DJI air unit manual. And this is important because this is a DJI air unit. We have a $190 product inside of this little tiny quadcopter. This is not like they just gave you a, a $12 Caddx camera. This, I mean, they put a real air unit in here. It's got a serial number and it actually is manufactured by DJI. So you've got your warranty through them on that. And then you've got your warranty through Holy Bro on your actual quadcopter. All right, so we've got some 3140 T motor propellers. And these are a very nice propeller. They're a gray color, they'll match the scheme, they look very nice. So you only get one set, keep that in mind. If you guys have bought this quadcopter, you are going to wanna order extra props. We're gonna see how it flies, how's the video, how does it do right out of the box? Now, if it doesn't need anything, it doesn't need anything, but if it needs something, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So that way, if you bought one too, you'll know how to do that. All right, I'm having a feeling that this strap is what's holding it down. Oh. Dang, that's a serious strap. Oh, they actually sewed the strap to the case. Wow, that is nice. So when I'm ready to head to, oh my goodness. Let me put this thing, I might use this on a five incher. I mean, I've got the space, right? Wow, that's cool. Right out of the box, I'm noticing we've got no camera tilt. So if you don't know any better, you're probably not gonna fly very fast or far. All right, so. Let's finish here real quick. What do we got? All right, they've given us some zip ties. We've got our prop nuts. You gotta have that. I noticed there's no prop nuts on there. You've got some extra C-clips. I'm not sure if you can see that. It looks like they just zip tied our DJI antenna. So if you're to pop one, you could uh, re-zip tie it back on. Now, as far as your battery strap goes, you're pretty limited because your DJI air unit is there. So if you're probably gonna be strapping here-ish, you're probably gonna to wanna to hug closer to the front to keep your, your COG good. You wanna keep that good because right now we are back heavy. Can you see that? If I hold in the middle, it kinda of tilts backwards and that's because we got the big heavy DJI air unit in the back and the front we've got pretty much nothing but the camera. So it'll probably make sense to try to shift your battery a little bit up towards the front. And then we're gonna crack this open and see what's under the hood. All right, looks like we have a spare cable and that's assuming that they did connect the original cable for us. I don't know if it's connected, we'll find out here in a minute. All right, the screws are definitely on tight, which is a good thing. That means they put it together. And four. All right, looks like we're gonna have to cut off these zip ties so we can get inside of there and get a better look. 
All right, so I had to disconnect everything a little bit. I had to cut off the zip ties holding on the antennas, which really was no big deal. They even gave us a set that I can use, or I have some that I can use to put it back together. But I didn't want to just set it up and take it out to the field and not show you guys what is actually going on inside of here. Taking a closer look, we can see we've got a nice size F7 MCU. It's a little bit bigger than normal if you notice. And something else I'm gonna notice on here is I'm not seeing an OSD chip. Now, is there one on the other side? I mean, possibly there is, but it's not looking like there's an OSD chip. And that would make sense seeing that there's a DJI Air unit in here. You don't need OSD because you've got it on the DJI Air unit. Well, your thought is, well, what if I've got the analog version? Don't I, need, uh, don't I need OSD then? Well, yes, if you've got the analog version, you will need an OSD, a Betaflight OSD chip on your flight controller. So what you've got here is you've got the STM32F745 microcontroller unit. And that is a different microcontroller that's on this one than that's on the other board. The other board is actually a Kakute uh, F7 V15. V1.5 is actually what's on that flight controller. So if you have the analog version, your flight controller is going to be different. It'll be the same manufacturer. It'll probably have all the same pins. It's just going to look and probably work just a little bit different. Maybe not even enough for you to notice during flight. But with me having the DJI Air unit inside of this little guy right here, I do not need OSD, so they don't ship it to you with it. So if you have plans of pulling this DJI Air unit out and putting a regular VTX in, you're going to need an OSD chip. You'll need something like this, a little OSD mini, which is something that you'll just wire up to a UART and then you can set it up inside of the ports tab of Betaflight and then you jump inside of the OSD tab and you set that guy up. And you'll basically have full Betaflight OSD without having an OSD chip. Or you can also put yourself in like a TBS Unify Evo and that'll get you uh, you know, the basic stats that you need, like voltage, a timer, and maybe what VTX channel you're on, something like that. All right, as far as our ESC, this is a 45 amp ESC. It does look like a 20 by 20, so it's not full size. I'm not a fan of that because no matter how you spin it, a smaller board is never going to have the power that a bigger board is going to have. I do notice that uh, they've got it laid out nicely. There's a nice shunt resistor here. You've got yourself some extra caps. They put this uh, glue type deal right here probably to prevent contact between this and the air unit. Everything is clearly conformal coated. That's always a good sign. And this is a very, very basic build. I'm gonna show you something right here. Looking at this flight controller, okay, You've got yourself one wiring harness here that shoots back to your ESC, and then you've got yourself another one, which is this right here that connects to your DJI Air unit. And then looking over here, I'm seeing an MPU 6000. We've got a boot button, and I cannot see underneath. I'm not gonna demount it from the actual frame but I think there's some onboard flash too. But overall, you do have some pins laid out here. You really don't need them because everything's plug and play. You've got two connectors, you're done. So if you're not really a fan of soldering and you want it nice and easy, this is probably a good flight controller to have with or without this quad. And if anything does happen to the quad, you got yourself the air unit you can always pull out and you can always take this flight controller on to the next build. You will have to figure out your ESC unless you didn't break that, then you can reuse that. What I'm seeing here is a little bit of 3D print on the back that's nice. It's nice to see some type of design. You're gonna charge this kind of number for a drone. Let me go ahead and put that number up on the screen for you because I'm not really sure. I'll have to check later. I think it's like 330, something like that. I know, I know, it's a lot, but at least you got yourself a DJI Air unit. No matter what happens to this drone, if you don't break that, you can always bring that with you to your next quad and you are not limited. You are not stuck with a three inch or a two inch or a four inch. I mean, you can put this in anything you want. You can even change it all up and do a Cinewhoop if you want. There is no restrictions there because this air unit does it all. And it is a real DJI FPV air unit. 
directly from the manufacturer. It doesn't get better than that. You got your T-Motor motors, you've got a cap. Now, one thing I'm not happy about is they did give us XT30. Who really has laying around a four cell 1000 milliamp hour, 1200, 1300, who has that in XT30? I don't, I don't know if you guys do, do you? Do you? I, I don't. So now I've got to go ahead and I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to go ahead and solder me up a XT60 because that's what my batteries are and I don't want to be limited to 850s or 650s, something small like that. This thing can carry and can handle a 1300, 1200, maybe 1100. Let me see what I got here. So you see this, look at this. This is a 1300 4S. This thing is probably perfect on here. It's not too big. It's probably a little bit heavy, but it's not too big. And I would imagine it's going to carry it around just freaking fine. So that's what I'm going to suggest. If you go with something like this, a little tiny 450 or a 650 or an 850, it's probably just not going to be enough. I would not go under a thousand, but I'll have more information on that for you once I go and actually fly this guy and get it out in the air and actually try it out. We are gonna put this guy back together and then we are gonna power it up. We're gonna check a few things out inside of the configurator. I wanna show you guys what it comes with. How does it come? And then, and then, okay, she is back together. I'm going to go ahead and just stick a zip tie through this little cutout they have in the frame here and we're gonna lock down the antenna with it. They did give us an anti-slip battery pad. I'm gonna stick that on because that is extremely necessary. I'm gonna go right under the Copus Mini with that. Mm. And we are on and popping. There is another plastic on the top. I'm gonna leave that for now. Okay, so the next thing to do is to power it up and see if it explodes. Who's ready? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so I'm gonna set those things up and then we're gonna take it to the field. We will conquer all the oceans you can name. No, we won't take I'm sorry for not slipping in, but don't worry, we'll find our way in. So I'm sorry for not slipping in, not slipping in, not slipping in. Wanted to show you guys what it flies like and I'm just absolutely impressed. I don't know if it's the DJI with the view with the little drone and I can squeeze in little spots. I mean the thing just flies amazing. So I have this little guy here. It is a tattoo 4 cell 850 if you can check that out and it absolutely flew amazing. It was a tad bit light so when I get up in the air I get a slight wobble almost like I just didn't have enough weight to throw myself around. You know, kind of like how a whoop would feel. If you've ever flown a whoop drone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, once I strapped on this 4 cell 1300, you would think that's probably too much weight, right? No, it was freaking amazing. I didn't have anything to do with this tail piece, so it's kind of all in the way. I created a little adapter right here. Uh, it got chewed up in the props, but uh, it did look nice before I chewed it all up. Let me show you. So now you can see it's a little torn up. It got hit, but I'll just put a little bit of heat shrink back on it. But I just put an XT60 by XT30. You go ahead and plug this in right like that. And then that allows you to plug your, your battery in like that. Okay. 
Now, you'll also notice I took a nice hard crash to the back and I smashed my cap. So I'm gonna have to open this up and change my capacitor out. It's not the end of the world. I got some grass on there and dirtied it up a little bit. Took a couple crashes. The props did well, the quad did well. I mean, it just flew amazing. I don't know, I'm really impressed. I did some speed runs to kind of see the kind of speed she has. She really does have speed uh, mixed with the agility and just the, the compact size. And then to, to be in the sticks, on the sticks, in the goggles, I'm flying, I feel like I'm flying a full size quadcopter, but I'm not, I'm only in a three inch. All right, pilots, so that is going to do it for the Copus Mini review. Uh, we did a flight footage, we opened it up, we saw under the hood. We tried it out. We didn't touch any settings. We see what it flies like right out of the box, and it does fly good. And I am going back to the sky. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. Come to the river. Let me see the water side. Let me slip into the water Go down until I drown So I'm sorry for not slipping in But don't worry